Hi there, everybody. Rob here again from Power Learning Solutions with another video in my series of tips and tricks on writing research papers for students. This video was inspired by a series of emails that I recently received from a couple of my grad students who are doing a major research project as a capstone for one of their graduate programs. And they're in the final stages now. They've collected their data and they're doing their final write-ups. So this infographic shows the basic structure that you would use for a research report. This is the same structure that you would use regardless of whether you're writing a paper for an assignment in one of your courses or a paper for submission to an academic journal or a longer document broken down into chapters like a master's or a doctoral uh, thesis dissertation. Chapter one, you're presenting your introduction. So what you are going to explore, what questions you're asking, why you're asking those questions. Chapter two or section two is your literature review. This is where you present what we already know from past research and past writing on this topic. What do we know about the topic? What does past work tell us that we can expect to find uh, based on different theories and models? Chapter three or section three is where you uh, talk about your methodology, what we are going to do, how we are gonna collect data and how we are gonna analyze that data. Chapter four or section four is where you present what you found in your research. You present the raw data, you present uh, some basic calculations on the raw data, but you don't discuss any of the implications. In chapter five, that's where you discuss the implications and what everything means. That's your discussions chapter. And in chapter six or section six, your final section of your paper or your report, your conclusions, your limitations, and your recommendations. So the big question that came out of the series of emails that I recently received what is the actual difference between chapter four and chapter five? How do I distinguish between uh, presenting my data and my data analysis and my discussion of the data? Well, let's look at some examples from a recent paper that I wrote and published with a colleague of mine, Dr. Robin Kay. This was a paper where we looked at the results of some research into supports that were available to higher education faculty at two Canadian universities during the COVID-19 pandemic. So when we get to chapter four or section four of this paper, we're presenting our data, what we actually found. Well, here are some examples of what we found. In this particular table, we're presenting just raw demographic data from the survey that we conducted how many faculty responded to the survey from each university and what was their demographic breakdown based on their area of specialization. Here's an example of another table of data that we presented uh, from our survey. This is simply a list based on survey responses of the types of supports that faculty said were available to them during the pandemic. We also had some figures that we embedded into our uh, into our paper. Here's uh, here's one of those figures. The external resources that were used by faculty to support their transition to online teaching. Presenting this in a graphical format because it tells a better story uh, based on the question that we are asking than presenting the raw data in a table would. And here's another figure. Some additional supports that faculty would have liked to have available to them during the pandemic. As you can see in this, we have performed some calculations for chapter four or section four. We've presented some of the raw data, we've aggregated the data, we've shown some averages, we've shown some percentages of the types of responses that we've gotten. Depending on the type of research you're doing, maybe you're doing some pre-test and post-test results based on uh, an assessment that you did with your students after uh, before and after teaching a certain topic. Well, you might want to do some calculations on statistical significance of your results. You could present those types of things in chapter four. So what exactly do you look at in chapter five? Well, that's where you start discussing what this all actually means. If we look at um, this excerpt here from our paper, 
I start relating what we found in our data back to the literature review. I talk about the different theories and models that we, uh, we had explored in our literature review. And uh, then I start talking about what we found during the COVID-19 pandemic. And I start interpreting those findings through the lenses of the different theories and models and frameworks that we discussed in our literature review. So this is where you actually tell the story of what the data is telling you. In chapter four, it's a presentation of the raw data and your calculations on the data. In chapter five, you tell the story about what it all means. And then you wrap things up in chapter six by talking about uh, your, your final conclusions. What, what can we actually conclude as a result of this research? What are the limitations of the research in terms of generalizing our findings? And what do we now recommend that uh, policymakers or frontline practitioners do? Or what do we recommend in terms of future research based on what we have now already found?